Hi everyone, welcome back to this tutorial series where we're building an app. And today we were going to be building our login logout screen. But before we do that, I think it's important to look at our navigation so far. We've been navigating using passing parameters, which is not the prettiest form of navigation when you look at world-class apps like Insta, where you can do slash and type in a username and it'll bring you to that user. Now, what we'd like to do is set up our app so that we can type in slash login and go to the login screen and also build a handler to handle any type of URL um, that you could possibly think of. Now, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to set it up through the 404 page that already exists. And the reason for that is because traditionally, um, the way that bubble works is that if you type in just your domain level um, URL and slash, we're going to keep version test because it's not uh, deployed to live yet. Um, and then you type in slash and the name of a page like login it's going to look through the pages that exist here and it's going to look for login. And if it doesn't find it, it's going to send you to the 404. So a workaround is to add a new page called login and then in the page login, add a workflow general when page is loaded and when page is loaded, navigation, go to page index and send the parameters uh, that you need. So let's say P and login. So traditionally, this is a good workaround. The way you could see is just by typing slash login, and then it's going to actually bring me back to my index page with a P of login, and then I can display um, the groups based on that. So if you're trying to build a single page app, this works, but the limitation is, let's say you want user pages like in Insta, so Insta slash uh, a username, you would need to actually create a new page for every single user manually as they sign up for your app. And that's just not feasible. And there could be other things like, let's say you, each user has a company, then you would need to add a new page for each company. And, you know, it, it, it'll just create a manual mess. And this, if you have 10,000 users, you'll have 10,000 pages. And we don't want that happening. So we're going to add a handler in 404 that looks through a list of predetermined pages and basically sends you back to the index page with that uh, p-value that you need, whether it be a user or a login. So we're going to build it for login first, and we're going to hold down shift and select all of your elements. Your 404 will look a little bit different, but select everything and group it into a group. And that group, we're actually just going to say, is not visible on page load but it's going to be visible um, if we don't find any URLs that we've set up that'll bring me back to the index page. Uh, just for UI, UX UI purposes, we're going to add an image and we're going to upload a spinning wheel of GIF. And we're going to make it fixed width. We're going to center it horizontally. And we're going to say while or if group A isn't visible, then this element will be visible. And it's just going to give us a little bit of time to run some searches and see if uh, the URL that they typed in is valid or not. And then we're going to show the 404 page if the page actually doesn't exist. Next, we need a handler to find, to extract, first of all, whatever is behind the first slash. So let's say login. Um, and, oh, this actually works because I still have my page here. So let's go and type in something that we know doesn't exist. So let's go slash log out. And you'll notice that everything that is before log out will always remain the same on your 404 page. And everything that comes after is what we're trying to extract. So we're going to select this, we're going to copy it, we're going to go back here into workflow, and we're going to go when page is loaded. Um, oops, we're on the login page? I thought I deleted that page. Let's delete the login page. Yes. So let's go to 404, and let's go here, and we're going to say when general page is loaded, 
we're going to extract those values. Um, so the way we're going to store it is in a state. And a state is a variable, just like in your data tab. And the main advantage of states is that they live on the user's machine. And it's much faster to read and write than data elements, but it's a variable and it can be used and functions just as well as anything you can put in the data tab. So we'll sort on the page itself. Um, I already have a number for my initial testing, but let's type in a pretty URL and write it as a text, okay? I'm not gonna hit create because I already have it. You guys hit create. And then you'll have a variable called pretty URL and you could store its value. Now the value, like we said, is the URL minus all of this stuff. So we're gonna remove all of this stuff by using the find and replace function down here, find and replace. And we're gonna find all of this and replace it by nothing. And now we've effectively stored in page 404 everything that comes in after the URL. Next, we have to check it against our data. And in our data tab, we're gonna create a new type called pretty URL. And that data type is going to have a name. And that, that list of names will be, a, will be a list of texts. Texts, thank you. And in our app data, we, we're actually able to set up all of the names that we want. Login being the first one, and as a test, we're also going to add a username. Okay, so now we have two options that should be available to all of our users being username and login. Now in our workflow tab, we've extracted it. Now we have to check if it's uh, one of those things. And if it is, then we're going to navigate. But because we can't put a navigation go to page unless it's the last, very last thing we, we have in our workflow, we have to set it up in a custom event. This custom event can be has URL, and it will navigate to the index page, and it will send a parameter, P, that's equal to whatever we extracted, so this page is pretty URL. So effectively, if we call it here, trigger custom event has URL, we'll only trigger it when we look through all of our pretty URLs, their names. So we just created a list of all of the names that are available in our data tab. Um, contains this page's pretty URL. Then we're going to trigger go to page index. And we're also going to terminate this workflow when the same. Um, when the same condition is true. So effectively, if I type in login, it's going to store login in 404, then it's going to trigger has URL when it finds login to be a valid name. So login is contained in the list that we've created of available pretty URLs. And then it's going to terminate the workflow. Now we wanna add a handler for when we don't have in our list the um, the URL that we're trying to extract, we want to element actions show um, the actual group 404. So if we type in logout, it'll store logout, it'll look for logout, it won't find it, so it won't terminate the workflow, and it'll show group A. So let's see, logout, it should have a little spinner, and then it should, oh, this is visible on page load. So it just stayed there. Let's try that again with the logout. It'll look for it in our, and then it won't find it. So our 404 will effectively show. But what about something that does exist, like login? Well, it actually looked through the list, it found it, it sent us back to our index, and now we have a P of login, and we can set it up, um, set up our groups the way that we want them to be set up. The next one was username, I think, slash username. And again, it will find it and send us back to our index with username. And now in the data tab, you can add any pretty URL you want for the rest of the creation of your app, including every time you create a username, you can create a pretty URL for that user and automatically 
anytime somebody types in that pretty URL, they'll be sent back to the index page with the correct parameters and values. And it's not the best uh, situation, but it is pretty fast. And for you advanced users watching this, you can actually track which pretty URLs are most used and create different sets of pretty URLs that you can search through sequentially. So you could have user pretty URL, uh, basic pretty URL with like login support, help, uh, about us, privacy terms, etc. And you can run them one at a time and do three searches exactly like we've set up here. You could say trigger has URL for your basic first, which will be a list of, I don't know, 10 items. Then look for your users, then look for your companies, etc. And at the end, show group A. Because um, if you have a lot of data, a lot of potential um, URLs, then the 404 page might actually take a second or two with that spinner while you're running all the searches. So you can segregate them so that the load times are faster for the most commonly used pretty URLs. I hope that makes sense. And so now we're all set up to start actually building out our um, URL slash login. And that'll be the next video. Cheers.